With winter closing golf courses all across my home of British Columbia and Canada, I've decided to come back to my old home of the UK for a few months. Growing up in the Southwest, I've played on a whole bunch of courses in this area during my junior years, but that was a long time ago. I'm hoping to revisit as many of these as possible, but I'll be basing myself at Ragbarn Golf Club here in Wiltshire. In this video, we're going to take a look at the club's 18-hole course and see where my golf is after quarantining and the UK lockdown. But before that, let's take a look at some of Ragbarn's facilities. Built in 1990 and still owned and managed by the original owner, Tim Manners, Rag has a covered 250-yard driving range, which is something that I've really been missing. There are also teaching facilities kitted out with a track man, and I'm sure I'll get a chance to check this out. Something I've really been missing in Squamish is somewhere to practice longer approach shots and the six hole par three course is perfect for this. This space is gonna help me dial in those tricky half shots as well as improving my chipping. There's a putting green right next to the first tee, a clubhouse that's been able to offer a COVID friendly service and a well stocked pro shop that provides club fitting that I may have already tried out. I've picked up a new three wood as my old one was just hopeless. And if you'd like to catch the video of that buying process, then make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my future uploads. I've also grabbed a rangefinder during the Black Friday sales, and so far, it's been pretty useful. Previously, I've just been asking all my friends if I can borrow theirs, so now I have my own. Now, this isn't my first round back. I've played a few times now, but the weather has been a little bit wet, so the cameras have stayed packed up. But so far, I've been playing pretty well. The first round back was actually an 11 over 83. And the other rounds that I've played have been kind of in the mid 80s. A lot better than over in Squamish, even with these tricky winter conditions. But how will I fare now the cameras are back on? Well, let's find out as I'm joined by Martin, a member of the course and a friend of my stepdad, Roger. You can see as I crush the new three wood a mile down the first hole that the conditions were crisp and ideal for winter. The second shot didn't quite go to plan, and I pretty much shank one to the other side of the fairway. The approach shot goes a lot better, coming up a touch short, ending the first hole with a two putt and a bogey. Oh, good try. What are we going to play for then? Surprise. Pride. How much does pride cost? Um, Fiver? Cup of tea? I always try and play them for money, Sam, and they never want to, even though I've only played this golf course twice, and they've lived here. The par 4 second goes up and over this rolling hill. Martin hits a nice one straight up the middle, and I just about outdo him with this beautiful draw. I've no idea what's happened during this lockdown and quarantine time, but I came out of it with my driver going better than it ever has done. But with a solid fat on my second shot, I end up in the greenside bunker. The wet sand isn't a challenge though, and I got out nicely, and knocking in the par putt. The par 3 third is a little bit uphill, and I hit my tee shot a tad thin, ending up just next to Martin in front of the green. Chipping on, I knock in a solid putt, making another par. Now, contrary to what I said about my drives before, the drive on the par 5 fourth is the thing of nightmares, and I leak it miles to the right and in the thick stuff. Luckily, new cameraman Sam showed himself to be quite the expert in finding lost balls on this day, and I was back in play. I pitched it back out, looking to get on in four, but I thinned my hybrid straight into the face of this bunker, and it went nowhere near the green. It was a fair bit of wind up high, and my fourth shot doesn't get onto the green, even though I was only 150 yards away. My short game fails me, and my old pal, the triple bogey, bullies its way back onto my scorecard. I swear, if I can just have one round without one of these things, I'm going to break 80. The fifth hole is a signature par 3 at 150 yards away from the winter mats. You definitely don't want to thin a tee shot here, and that's exactly what I did. A terrible chip followed up, and I have one of the worst three putts ever, ending in oh a double God. bogey. Oh. 
It's easy to play for money. Well, we still can. But it's time to get my game back on track. Both me and Martin Hoonar drives down the Par 5's fairway. I lay up with a 5-iron and hit a gap wedge pin high from 115 yards. And the birdie putt goes straight in the hole. And that's how you follow a triple and a double bogey. <laughs> The seventh does have a small stream that cuts across the fairway about 200 yards off the tee, but that shouldn't be a problem. On this day, this tee shot was straight into the sun, and we were playing completely blind all the way down this hole. I hit what I thought was a perfectly okay seven iron into the green, but it was nowhere to be seen. Watching the footage back, I think my alignment was a bit off, but I was okay because Sam the cameraman had found it miles away from where we first thought. I somehow scrambled a bogey out of this string of errors. We were back to being good off the tee again and I left myself about 100 yards into the flag on the 8th hole. But I got a bit underneath it and I came up short in this bunker. Getting out okay but missing the par putt for another bogey. A blind shot up a hill greets you on the 9th hole but if you take it over the trees on the right you can end up in position A which is exactly where I was, only 70 yards away from the hole. What followed was two horrifically fatted shots, one of them not on camera. Oh. And somehow I ended up with a bogey. Terrible. Eight over after nine though, which is still to my handicap index of 15. I sent one down the left side into the blinding sun on the par 5 tenth and played sensibly just over this hill to get back in play as I was blocked out by the trees. But then we discovered that we were playing to temporary greens as we got over said hill. It had been very wet for the days beforehand. But regardless of that, we ended up having a bit of fun with this one. I'm gonna chip this in, Sam. Yep, hold up. The 11th might actually be drivable off the mats here, as I hit a bad three wood miles to the right, but was left with only 115 yards in. We'll see how close I can get to this in the future, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel to I see just to how right. close I can get. But with more club needed in the end, I ended up short and rounded out this hole with a bogey. There's a hole in one opportunity on the 12th, playing 120 yards to the pin, I took out my pitching wedge and hit the best shot of the day. Sam, have you seen that? What do you reckon? That's Pretty, pretty accurate. Close. It's pretty, it's pretty accurate. It <laughs> that is a good way of doing it. Get in. Oh. I line up the putt and roll in birdie number two. Oh, he gets it. He gets the bird. Well done. Thank you. Two absolutely leather drives up the 13th for myself and Martin, and both of us get on the green for two. Although Martin's result is pretty marginal. I didn't give my birdie putt enough of a look. Ooh. But Martin on the other hand. Oh, oh the bubble! Oh, oh he gets it! He gets it! That is very, very good. Another rightward tee shot on the 14th and I was behind some trees again. I swear the driver has been going better than this lately. I was too conservative playing out, hitting a tree with the third shot and ended up with a double bogey oh. on this hole. This has been my nightmare hole. I've tripled it almost every time I played it. Today, we're Wednesday. But that beautiful draw is back and I'm down there with just over 200 yards left. I hit the hybrid pin high, but just too far to the right. I pitch on and just missed the par putt. I was pretty stoked not to have a triple bogey on this hole though. My 16th tee shot gets completely held up by the wind and goes nowhere. This has normally been a solid par hole, but not today. An awful low hooked drive off the 17th creates another nightmare and I'm all over the place, including having to play left handed from behind this tree. Oh, 
What should have been a much simpler hole has ended up with another triple bogey. I swear, these are the bane of my golfing life. Up the 18th, Martin and I have a positive mental attitude to finishing well and both of us hit solid tee shots. The final hole has to be one of my favourites on this course, as it really has that coming home feeling as you play up towards the clubhouse. Martin lags his putt perfectly, and I must have been on a different planet or something with what I was doing. But I did knock it in for par. Well done. Yeah. The back nine is seven over after all that, leaving me with an 87. If I'm playing badly now and ending up below 90, I'm excited for how I can progress my game while I'm in the UK. With my goal of getting back to single figures, you'll want to follow along this journey, so hit subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And if you've enjoyed checking out the Ragbarn Golf Course, then let me know by hitting the like button. If you've played here, comment below and tell me how it went. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the course.